Okay, we welcome you, everyone who is watching and listening at home. You are watching Car Radio and uh, Car TV, and uh, you, it's our radio station, <clears throat> global radio station. As you know, we've got our app globally. We are connected. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, always in during the week, we have these shows. We have our guests, international guests coming together. We are speaking to the church. We are asking what God is saying, even in the now, because God is still saying something. <clears throat> As God saying something, the world progress. We believe in the words of the prophets. We believe what God is saying today because it is our time. It is our moment. You know, he said, I have the plans that I have for you, the plans to prosper you, not the plans to harm you. We are waiting. God is speaking. God is using his servant and uh, to impart <clears throat> the message as the spokesperson to the church even today. I am starting, I will start by welcoming, you know, our prophet, Pastor Mazo, the connector, <laughs> <laughs> the one God is using, and she's going to introduce us to our guest today. I welcome you, welcome you, welcome you, my prophet, in the name of Jesus. How are you today? <laughs> I'm very well, thanks, uh, my apostle, and uh, I'm so glad that Apostle Bessie has tuned in. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, as Apostle was saying that we have a program of connecting with the world and extend mm. our borders and uh, exploit and assess every uh, channel that the Lord is using during this time and the era to spread the gospel and also to unite and also to hear what other nations are saying because we have a message. I believe that each one of us has a message, but that message does not to be um, locked in one country, in one continent. It needs to go all over the world. As we know, the Great Commission still stands that says, go ye there into the nations. Mm. So this is the hour and the time where uh, Apostle Suwane has got that sense that let us extend our borders and broaden our horizons. And then I thought of my powerful sister, uh, Apostle Bessie Foster from Arizona, uh, America. We met in Zambia. <laughs> there is a long story, but we will share the story of how we met. Uh, okay. Maybe she must be the one exactly <laughs> to share how we met because it's so interesting of how we met. Yes. And then uh, Apostle Percy, uh, this is Apostle Suwane. We have worked with him for many years and God has graced him. He has planted about 15 churches in South mm -hmm. Africa and abroad. And then more than that, he was awarded a doctorate honorarium uh, by South Africa because of the work that he's doing besides and beyond the church to the community and to the society at large. Uh, above and over and above, we are in his. He owns this uh, TV program and radio station that goes all over the continent. So it's a blessing to walk with him. Uh, as I've said, I've worked with him for more than 16 years working together. When I started um, an international prophetic uh, training, uh, he came alongside with me and we have worked till this day. So it's a blessing. He is a man of humility, but with great works. So over to you, uh, Apostle. <laughs> Thank, thank you very much, my prophet. And uh, I mean, I'm so humbled, <laughs> the manner of introduction. Thank you very much. And we also welcome uh, 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 Apostle Forster. And uh, we, we want to hear what God has to say to us in Africa. We want to hear what God has laid in your hand, in your heart, uh, even for the church today. And we really acknowledge and thank God with the vessel that he's God is using 
and our prophet, Prophet Moy, and uh, God is doing <laughs> wonders through her, connecting the world, connecting the continent, connecting uh, different countries. Yeah, so we are so blessed to have a vessel like here. And uh, he, she has changed so many lives, even my life and my family and also things that have happened. So we are so blessed in this generation to have a vessel like you. And uh, yeah, we are, yeah, it, it is the truth. <laughs> yeah, we are. And also today we are connected to you, um, Apostle, uh, Apostle Percy. We, we, we can't wait to hear what God has to say today. Yeah, so we welcome you. We welcome you on our program. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's an honor to meet you, Apostle. And um, I thank God I, I met Apostle Mosley. Um, actually, it was quite interesting how the Lord, we met first at the United, with African United Summit, if I'm pronouncing this right. And um, my, my, one of my spiritual daughters just took me in the back and I waited till the last minute. And that's when um, out of this blue sky, she just came and started talking to me and I'm like, what? <laughs> and what she was saying was quite accurate. <laughs> so she said, oh, I'm sorry, let me, I said, you can fix your thinking. Because what you're saying is very correct. You're accurate. Right. And mm. then, after the summit, I mean, she went one way and I went another way and everything. And I ended up with this unique phone call. And the <laughs> phone call um, asked me to call this number. So I called the number and all of a sudden, I guess they thought, they thought it was strange. Like, okay, who's this woman calling? So it was like, can you call us on WhatsApp? Well, sure, I'll call the WhatsApp. So I call on WhatsApp and that's how we end up communicating again, which was really amazing. And I give God the glory, but it was like, she gave me her phone number. So I had no way to contact her. This is the way God just divinely put us back. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I thank God for this opportunity. But in the midst of sharing what you were saying about um, the things that are happening in this time frame that we're in, and I was like, I was, I was praying, but in the midst of it, it was like I was in it up in Psalms um, 16. But as how the Lord brought it, everything together was really amazing to me. And so let me share what the Lord is telling me about South Africa. Okay. All right. And so one is you have to look to your maker, okay? He is the maker, your master, and he has designed you and created y'all and fashioned y'all, okay? And so since he has done all these things, you have to look to God Almighty for everything that he has for your nation. Don't look nowhere else. Look to God. OK, because God has a book for your nation that's that's in the courts of heaven. I'm not for sure if you know or familiar with the courts of heaven, but everything that God has is in the courts of heaven, in the book for the nation. OK, and so even though the world is going through the shaking and everything, there's still each nation has a destiny of its own within the people that are in the nation to to. Um, play a big role for the picture that God has for each nation, okay? Yes, we understand that justice is coming in and God is not happy with the way the different systems have operated and, and have dealt with the, the needy, have dealt with um, accepting bribes and all the different corruptions and everything. That is worldwide, yes. And God is dealing with everybody. But in South Africa, God is wanting you to know that he, that, that he's saying that my holy, my holy lovers in the land are my gracious ones and who has fulfilled all my desires. These holy ones, the lovers are, are the people that has been keeping his commandments and statutes, are the people that has been obedient to his word, are the people that 
are obedient and follow his instruction in spite of what all is going on in this time and season. And so you are doers of the word. And that's what he's looking at. The others that are weak or going on, he's going to deal with them. Okay. But you have decided that Yahweh is your portion. God is your portion. He's your everything. And so he has set boundaries. Okay. For South Africa. And so when I go back and I look at Acts 17, verses 24 to 26, and I'm looking at all of this, and he's saying, the interesting thing was, he's saying that the true God is the creator of all things. And so he is the owner and the Lord of the heavenly realms and also the earthly realms. And so he doesn't like, he's, you know, he's not made, you know, out of a uh, man-made temple. He's not like that, but he decides life and breath and all the things that that are living in everything. So he supplies everything. But when he has set boundaries for people and nations determined on the appointed times of the boundary and so of history. So he commands that the separation of seasons and sets and lifespan of every person, including his nation. Okay. And so he has chosen these times and boundaries of our habitation that means that we, we are alive in this time and season and we're placed where we are because this is the carol ties of the habitation that he has set. And we are to build a house in this time and season of our life because God needs his, he's coming for his harvest. We are to gather the harvest. So meaning we need to set up storehouses. We need to set up places. We need to prepare the people and equip people for the work of the ministry. We have to continue to pray. We have to set our face like Flint. We have to stay focused and don't be moved to guard us of what's going on in the area around you, in the nations or other nations. Your thing is to stay focused to what God would have you to do in this time and season. Yes. Coronavirus, God is going to deal with the coronavirus and everything. And I believe it's going to leave. But at the same token, God is working it for our good and not for our evil, okay? And so we are to stay focused in this time and build a house. And so when he talks about building a house, he wants, he takes us back into Genesis. And, 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 I, and I like that because when he does that, he's saying, I want you to come into the place and I want you to go back in Genesis 1, He wants us to, to be fruitful. He wants us to multiply. He wants us to replenish. He wants us to uh, take dominion and to subdue. And so that, he's given us that authority in the earth. And this is what we are supposed to do. And we're supposed to, to keep it. We're supposed to dress it. So we need to clear the land and we have to prepare it and build this house according to where he wants the house built. Not what we think, only he could give us that direction of how the house is supposed to be built. So South Africa, he has the way your house has to be built and designed and fashioned according to his will. Do not deviate the way he is saying to do things. It's just like when he took the Moses in the tabernacle, he gave them the pattern, he gave them the blueprint, he gave them the plan, and this was for Moses to do. But God made sure that there were people that come alongside to help to make sure that the, what he has given him will turn around to be established in the earth. It's the same thing with South Africa. There's a pattern, there's a blueprint, there's a plan that God has given. Relook at the vision for the nation, relook at it, and then Put in place what God says the nation is supposed to be. And then from there, as you're building the nation, you will begin to see things change and line up to the way God says he wants it. Because you have to get the harvest. You have to, to be able to stand strong and become all that God has called. He's called you, yes, into that place of unity. So we got to get past the, the differences of, of cultures, traditions, uh, traditions of elders, just get past all of that. Come together 
It doesn't matter about this is this person, the way they baptize. It doesn't matter that this person has this other way that they do things. But you got to come into unity. And what the Lord has showed me was a army that came together. And this is the army on the earth because God's angels, his, he's the Lord of Saboha. He has his army angel already working in the heavens, but it's the heavens and the earth army that comes together to work besides the nature that we have that's working on our behalf. And we have to come together and work. And as he was showing me this army, this army was working together on one accord, meaning you have, you are like-minded. You have minds that are come together and you're coming into this place of unity, working together side by side, meaning you're not worried about self. You're worried about others. And so, it is, so it's, there's no selfishness in this. It's a unity. It's about the other person. And when you come together in that way, you are able to stand strong. Because now you are more than conquerors. Because one could put one to flight and one could put, you know, another 10,000 flight. But when you come together, there's such a, a unity, but you become so much stronger. And if you look at the, the, uh, the, the Babel, the, the Tower of Babel, they had the wrong idea when they came into unity. But God said, if his people will come into unity. Do you know what you can do and what you can stop in the land of South Africa? Do you know what you can accomplish? So come into unity. And so if my people, he say, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. As you're praying and seeking his face and you're all doing this. And, and that means it's not just one church, but it's you all coming together. And when we have one focus, that means that someone's mind is not on their home here and someone's mind is maybe on their marriage or whatever. You have one focus because when you are not focusing together and not praying on one accord, you are now divided. God does not want y'all divided. It's when you're praying together, it's like on a Sunday, on a Sunday morning when you prove your corporate prayer. You got to be together. Because how is God supposed to answer the prayer? Because in the midst of him, he is there present with you. He is an actual partaker of the prayer. So meaning when you come together, all the church, he's in the midst and he's being taken a part of this. It's not just you by yourself. It's not just, just some people together. It's you coming together. And so I like when he was saying that when you come together, because it's in the unity that's going to cause all these other things to come into place. Because when you come together in unity with love, you got to learn to forgive one another, get past all the things that has happened. Because there's one thing about Christ did. When they pierced him on the side, his, the water in the blood came out and it ended up in the dirt. That means forgiveness was there. So meaning we got to come in to forgive, forgive the different people that are in the land, forgive those that have hurt you, forgive other nations, forgive everything. And when you do that and you come in together, God is right there because you remember you sit in the heavenly places with you. And as you're sitting in the heavenly places with you and you come in into that place, I like what he says. He says, now may God, the source of great interest, comfort, grace, and with unity amongst yourself, which flows from your relationship with Jesus, the anointed one, so that you may value one another equally in Jesus, the Messiah. So then, then, then that way you rush into this passion together and you will with one another to be one voice and you're glorifying God. And so the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you will bring glory. And he said, you will bring God so much glory. And when you accept and welcome one another as partners, then just as the anointed one has fully accepted you and received you as his partner, 
So we are supposed to do this. And when we do this, we're striving side by side. And with one mind, there is a revelation that will come forth. It's his revelation that he wants to give us. It's his revelation that he wants to pour into us. And so even when, when you look at all of that, the authority that we walk in and we will subdue and we will be fruitful, meaning we have to increase. We don't only just multiply, but we have to increase and we have to replenish and we have to do it and dominate. Meaning we have to be able to come together and do this and take what we have. That's what I liked about the apostles in the book. They came together. People sold lands and people sold houses and everything. It was not just theirs and it was not just this person, but they came together. And God is saying, come together. There are people with surplus. Come together. And that's how you meet and help one another. Address it and keep it. But we got to occupy until he come. We got to have faith. In faith will cause the mountains will be removed. In faith will cause not only the mountains, but it speaks of the kingdoms in the sea, represents the nations. And for example, the sea is the humanity. And so faith brings the reality of the kingdom rim into the nations, okay? And so then everyone prays as for the fullness of the faith you will receive, but out of that is faith, fullness lives in you. And when you speak the physical creation around you, it will respond to you. So faith unlocks great authority for the believer. And so when we speak a thing, it's just like he said, he created it out of the words that he speaks. So meaning with his words in our mouth and the words that he has given us and we speak his word and stand on his word, his word will not return to him void. It will establish what he accomplished because it's not our words, it's his words. And you will see the fruit of it. And so even as you are preparing for the harvest, and you are obeying him and everything. At the end of the day, we have to stand on the promises of God. Because we got to go and reach the seven mountains. We can no longer stay in the four walls. We've been on lockdown. And even though we've been on lockdown, the lockdown was to get us where we're not stuck in church. We have to go beyond the four walls. We're not stuck in religion. We have to come out and speak the truth the true word of God. We have to teach the true word of God. And it's not our words, but it's his words. And so meaning we have done, we have done so much teaching and everything of our forefathers and everything. And we cannot say why things have happened. Only God knows. We're not here to judge. But the thing is, we as the generation that are now in this, we are the army. We are his army and we have to speak truth and we have to teach and bring the, even the young ones and we have to teach them the truth and the pure word of God so that they know how to fight. So meaning the battle has been long, but we're in this war. And then the forties and under have to be able to fight in this war. If they don't know how to fight and stand, how are they going to be able to stand in the next war? How are they going to stand when the previous uh, people leave and they go, they leave and they leave this earth? How would they stand? How would they fight? How would they pray? How would they teach and equip the other ones that come behind him? We're in the end time, but it's not the time yet. Do we still have minutes in this hour? Understand? So meaning we are to continue to move forward in the things of God. And so in this end time, because like we hear a lot of end time, this is the time and this is the time. No, he's not coming back yet. Scripture even lets us know he is not coming back yet. The harvest has to come in. Not only is the harvest have to come in, there are things that has to happen. There has to be the transfer of the wealth. And that's one of the things that he's going to be dealing with in this, in this, this season. Time is changing that the wealth is going to come in to the people so that the people are not being selfish, but the wealth is for the kingdom and to get the harvest to come in, to gather the harvest. And so God had to get us past self. 
in this time and season and get us to a place that all we want is God so that we will hear God and obey God and hunger and thirst for his righteousness and run after him. So he want us to be in that place and to be able to stand like never stand before and fear not. We cannot walk in fear. We have to know that he have us. We don't worry about what man can do to these souls. At the end of the day, we better fear the one or what he can do us because we don't want to go to hell. So we want to be able to trust God, believe God, and stand on his word and fight in this war. We cannot lay down. We are not positive people. We are to fight. And even though this battle is not ours and the battle is the Lord, there's a way where we have to fight. So the bride of Christ had to get out of these nice, beautiful white robes that we got on in gowns and pull on your whole armor and fight in this season. We cannot lay down and die. We have to fight and we have to war. And he would give us that direction and the structure. If we're in a time, in a season, we are to decree and declare the word of God. Decree and declare what he gives you. And you will see it come to pass because God is dealing with a lot of things in this earth. It may look like one thing, but it is not the end of what you see with these natural eyes. Look beyond your natural eye. Begin to see in the realm of the spirit of God. And God wants us to be able to discern like never before. So in this time of season that we are in this bait area, it's not only just the pay area, which is a decade of the mouth, but this is the year of the sun, the sun, the son of God. This is the year that he said, prepare for the harvest. Get yourself together like never before and be ready because we have to gather them. We have to pull them in, but we have to be ready ourselves. Understand? You have to be ready yourself. So stay in the word and stay focused. And you're going to see great things happening. And even though that things are going to be crazy, but even though stuff is crazy because the devil knows he only has a short time. So even though things are crazy, you're going to see the miraculous happen. You're going to see signs and wonders and miracles like never before. They're going to happen. And God's going to give people dreams and visions of what they're supposed to be doing and making sure that they understand what their blueprints are. He's going to begin to give revelation like never before. He's going to pour down in such a way in the earth so that the people would know exactly what they need to be doing in this time and hour. Not only the plans that he has for you, but all the, the gifts and everything. We are the people that are supposed to walk and reveal the fruit of the spirit, the fruit. And you're going to be able to make a distinction. Who is God and who is not of God? So we have to discern not only in this season, who are your co-workers? Who are working with you? Who is working side by side with you? Who is laboring with you? You better know them by the spirit of God. Because you got what looks good and you got what looks evil at the same time. And even though evil may look like it's good, but are they really the good? Are they really the people of God? So know them by the fruit. Be able to discern them and know them by the spirit of God. Because there's a lot that's going to be going on. And God is dealing with his church. And so, yes, the Lord has not finished you yet. And you can rest assured Everybody has to come into his divine order. So there's still deaths that's going to be happening in many different areas because either we're going to align with God or we're not going to align with God. And if you're not going to be aligned with God, then eventually you will definitely be removed. How he removes you, I don't know. That's God's business. But you will be removed because you will not be a hindrance to what he wants to establish in the commerce in the earth at this time and season. So we need to make sure that we have repented and we have our own lives straight and in order. There is no game time. There is no times where he's winking at your sin no more. 
This is the time he says, I am serious. Enough is enough. I've given you time. The church has to mature and grow. The church can no longer be at a infant stage or a toddler stage. He said, it's time to mature and grow and be the soldier, be the army that he created you to be in here. We got to stand at the end of the day, like never before. God is God and there is no other gods. So stand and trust him. Trust him no matter what you see. Trust him. And when he tells you to do it, do it. I don't care if it looks crazy. I don't care if it sounds like this is just ridiculous. Hear him and obey his voice. When you hear him and obey, you will see the fruit of it. No matter if it looks like it's crazy at the moment, you will see exactly what he's telling you. Even though you may not understand it at the moment, just do it. It'll make sense. So a lot of times you won't see something until after it all comes into place. Then you'll know the truth of the matter. So God is saying, stand, fight. Don't give up in this hour. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Take back what he's given you. Take the authority of walking in and, and take the dominion and stand and fight in your nation and come together as one, like-minded, on one accord, because that's the army I saw. Because when they was marching, Everybody was on one accord. That means hands were, same hands was going. Was nothing out of sync. Meaning we're not selfish. We're depending on one another, but yet totally in God. Understand? Totally in God. Because we're all moving by the spirit of God. So be strong. Do not look what's going on or do not get caught on. I understand uh, a lot of us have lost a lot of family members. I have too. I understand the hurt and the pain, but God wants to heal his people. He wants to heal them from the wounds and the emotions because we can't walk in this season with our emotions on our shoulders. We can't walk in this, in this time frame with our emotions all balled up. We have to be in a place where we're healed and be able to move forward because we can't have things hindering us and stopping us in this hour. Understand, we have to believe what he's saying. God has you, really he does. So don't get stuck, don't get caught up with what the people are doing behind the scenes that, are, that are, are doing and still planning to do evil, don't get stuck in that. You just stand together and pray and watch God. Watch his word come to pass. God really loves each and every one of us. He really loves us more than what, what we realize that he does. He's not forgotten us. He's not forsaken us. And some feel like he has forgotten and forsaken when he has not. He really loves you. He's not the one that's, that, that's done this evil. He's not. He's a father that loves you for real and he wants the best. And so even in this shaking, was shaking from heaven all into earth. Everything that is being shaken at the end, what is shaken and was moved is because he's finished with it and it is supposed to be removed. But what is shaken and it still stands is what is supposed to stand in this hour. He has need of you. And that's why each and every one that is alive, he has need of you. We all play a role in what he has to accomplish in the earth. And it's not over with yet. So stay in course, South Africa. Stay encouraged like never before. He loves you. And believe me, there are angels, army angels that are fighting on behalf of South Africa. 
The angels are there in the nation. If you would just open up your eyes and see in the realm of the spirit like never before, the angels are in your nation fighting. Now partner with the angels and partner with Holy Spirit and take your place. Fight with them. And that's what he wants you to do. Partner with them. Because it takes us all together. It's just this thin layer between the great clouds of witnesses and us. It's this thin layer. So meaning heaven and earth are, they, they, they coming together, they colliding together. So we must work together. So when God sins, hear God clearly. When God sins, those that help you to build, build the house. As he said, he will make sure it's built. And that's this year is to build the house of the Lord. And while he's building the house of the Lord, he's building your house. Meaning he's looking at all the seven mountains. He's looking at your family. He's looking at business. He's looking at government. He's looking at the military, the economy, everything he's looking at. He's looking at the church, the religion. He's looking at everything. There's nothing that can be hidden or exempt in this hour. So everybody needs to come into his divine order, his divine order. And when we do that, we'll be okay. Know that he will protect his in this hour. It's, it's, it's going to be like Goshen, where the plagues hit, and they was dealing with all the other people with Pharaoh in Egypt, but God protect his own. And so meaning when he says, I need you to go here, he's going to keep you and protect you. Fear not of going where he tells you to go. And he's preparing us such a way that we will go into places that some of us didn't even want to go into. He's preparing you to go into those places. He's preparing your heart. And that's why some people have to be totally stripped and broken down. Because you got to go into the places that you may say, oh, no, you cannot be comfortable in this hour. You have to come out of the comfort zone. And you have to stand and believe him, for real, believe him. I don't know how much I can stress. There are more for you than there is against you. Know that. It's like, it's like when the Lord sent me into the, this nation. And as soon as I come out of the airport, I see the rays and tons of angels all around. That's God's army. His angels. It's the same thing in South Africa. Open up your eyes and see through his eyes. Don't get stuck in this season. Build the storehouses. Prepare for the harvest. And prepare the people. And you're going to be okay. And you're going to see the harvest come in. And those that are ready will see the wealth of the wicked come in. But it's to gather the harvest. And your churches, those that are really in line with God, are going to bloom. So prepare and have room. And you teach them because God has given you stewardship. Stewardship. So you are to steward what he entrusts in you with. And be good stewards of what he trusts you with. In your faithfulness, he's going to definitely make you rule over much. Amen. And this is what I'm gathering for this hour. It's to stay strong and prepare. No longer lay down. Fight. 
It's time to be awoke. I wake up. To everybody in South Africa, wake up. For real, wake up. Because let me tell you, if you don't wake up and something goes on, how are you going to help somebody else? When you are not awake and you sleep, how are you going to help the next person? How are you going to warn the next person if you're asleep? So you must wake up. You must wake up like never before. Wake up, church. Wake up. Because you have to be able to be the one, the light. You're the light in the earth. In the midst of darkness. So let your light shine and be bright like never before. And don't hide it. Don't hide it. Let your light shine. And speak his word with boldness. And fear not. Speak with boldness. And don't worry about what you're going to say or, or how you're going to say it. He will fill your mouth with the words to speak. Especially when they send you before the magistrates. He will give you what to say in that hour. So fear not. And this is what I'm gathering what he's singing for South Africa. There is hope. Don't think that there isn't. There is hope. And he's right there with you. You are not alone. He said he will never leave you or forsake you. And he will not. He's with you. Amen. And this is what I'm gathering. Wow. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm. You said, wow. Apostle. <laughs> Apostle, mm. get ready. Mm. Get ready. I've never been in your church. But I'm telling your church, the walls are going to bust out. Teach them. Mm. Mm. Give them everything that they need. And don't make them where they are depending on you. Make them where they're depending on God. They are to mature and they can't just run to you for anything and everything. They got to know how to pray for themselves. Mm. Because if they can't reach you and they can't reach no pastor or nobody else in your church, how are they going to stand in the days of hand? Stretch them like never before. Pull Amen. On them like never before. Everything that's in them, pull out of them so that they can see who they really are in Christ. They have to be strong in this Amen. hour. So your walls is going to burst. Mm. And the finances is going to come in. You're not going to have to worry. So be prepared to receive the harvest that's coming in. It's evangelism time like never before. And the word has to go out. And the word can't just sit in the church. But the people are going to have to go out of the church and go into the highways and the hedges. Meaning go out into the villages. Go out into the streets. Come out with, with creative ways and let them reach the people. No more pew sitters. No one sitting and saying they don't have nothing to do. Everybody has a part to play in the church. Everybody. So make wow. them a part and make them stand. But do not treat them as babies no more. Make them stand and depend on God. They have to get to a point where they sing. They read the word of God. And that's their word. 
They're not going to have to run to you and say what the Lord is saying to me today. In their Bible, God will give them a word. You will confirm what God has given them, but they should not have to run where they're saying, what is the Lord saying to me? What is the Lord saying what's going on? They should be able to know by themselves, by standing and being in the word of God. But things is going to change in your church. And so don't be amazed. He loves you, but you're going to take on more responsibility. And there's going to be doors that's going to open for you that no one can close. So Isaiah 22, 22 is for you. The key of David. <laughs> he gonna open up doors that no one can close. And what you bind on earth is gonna be bound in heaven. And what you loose on earth is been loosed in heaven. And your words that you speak will be just as God has spoken himself. It's not your words, it's his words. So prepare for the shift, Apostle. Because the shift is definitely coming. Mm, I hear. <laughs> and be separated. Because that's why he's called to a place of separation. Separate and prepare. Because you got to be ready for this shift. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. I hear you. <laughs> I can hear hey. you. <laughs> I like, I like, I, I, I love God. It's how he speaks. Yeah. Uh, when he says he's opening the doors, he's saying there's going to be a change in his church. That is so spot on. There is a huge transition in his church. And um, yeah, the keys of David, of opening the doors, and God has just opened a huge door for him. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> My God. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Apostle Desi. Thank you. That was mouthful. <laughs> there is a lot you have spoken. <laughs> we here we here in South Africa, what God is saying right now. And uh, yeah, Prophet Moy, you want to say <laughs> you were saying something. <laughs> Feel free to be led um, by the spirit. I can hear you. <laughs> can I say one more thing? Yes, yes, yes if you, can. you don't mind. <laughs> what I see is when I talk about this key of David, but this is what I'm seeing. I see you ever had like a picture and you have this door, but you see multiple doors behind this door. Mm -hmm. There are multiple doors that are open. Oh. There are things that's going to happen. Not only just this one door, but I see multiple doors opening for you. It's going to happen. And you're going to, be, you're going to move in the dimensions of God like never before. But this is what I've seen. And I want you to know that there's more than Amen. one door. It's doors behind each other. Wow. Amen. <laughs> I Amen. You, receive. Thank you. Wow, we receive. We receive. We receive. Yes, we receive. We Amen. receive. Amen. Thank Amen. God be the glory. Thank God Amen. be the glory. Uh, Apostle, uh, looking at the time, we are left with just three minutes. And um, uh, I want her to pray for uh, Apostles uh, Dr. Suwane's church and pray as the Lord leads you, and then also pray for South Africa. Hmm. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Father God, I just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that your angel armies are on the ground, Lord God, and that, Lord God, they're moving with you, oh God, like never before. And we are, God, we agree with you, Lord God, and we agree with your words, and we agree with your will. We agree that even revival will hit in South Africa, Lord God, and we hear the marching troops of heaven. We hear the sounds of the revival awakening the reformation of Jesus' name, and we march to see it done, Lord God. We embrace the call of heaven to move in 
and retake the land, Lord God. We thank you for the angels that who do God's bidding, Lord God, and that who God does. Not only that, Lord God, but we lose the angels, Lord God, like never before, oh God. Lord God, they are strong, watchful, and listening and believing of the wisdom and the power to circle us around now, Lord God, to minister, Lord God, to the goodwill of God in, Lord God, in the concrete, in the real ways, Lord God. Angels who cause the benefit of the kingdom of Christ materialize for them, Lord God, and be loosed in the name of Jesus. Angel who cause the benefits to stick to this Lord God, like honey on their hands, be loose, Lord God, and we decree that the sticky favor of God is all over Christ's heirs and long lasting benefits are medilitizing, Lord God, for their families, Lord God, for them, Lord God, for their churches, Lord God. Let the angels surround them and bring them, Lord God, everything, Lord God, that you have spoken to them, Lord God. Let the angels even cause justice and freedom to intersect, Lord God, their lives and let them be loose. Lord God. Let them stand on every promise, oh God. God, help them to be strong in this hour, Lord God. Lord God, let the plans of the enemy, the enemy, Lord God, will not prevail in this hour, Lord God. Your plans, Lord God, for the church will come to fruition, Lord God. Your plans, Lord God, that you have, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the chance for the wealth. We thank you, Lord God, that they'll be ready. We thank you, Lord God, that they're building the army like never before in the earth, Lord God, and that they will partner with you, and they will partner also with the angels in heaven, Lord God, and that they will become one, Lord God. Just as you say that you are, so we are supposed to be one with you, Lord God, they will become one, Lord you, Lord, long, um, uh, one with you, Lord God. And we declare that their destiny is the Holy Spirit in power. Our Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, that the gifts, the talents, the abilities of God be put in them like never before, Lord God, that the anointings and the anointings that is coming on the church, Lord God, for signs and wonders and, and that, Lord God, they'll move so powerfully, Lord God, and Lord God, that it will be amazing to them, Lord God, how you use South Africa, Lord God, that South Africa, Lord God, some of them will lose their, lead their nations and they will even go into other nations and they will even go across the waters, Lord God, and they'll be able to prophesy, Lord God, and bring revival and bring clarity and understanding and bring the true word of God, Lord God, that we even bring in the souls, Lord God, in other nations, Lord God, and Lord God, even the souls in their own nations, Lord God, Lord God, help them to hear you, Lord God, and come into that level and that realm like God they've never been before. Help them to stay focused, Lord God, that Lord God, that every distraction and confusion, Lord God. We ask that you remove it out of the way, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that your love will be poured upon them, that the love of God would infuse them with your love, Lord God, that will heal the wounds, they heal the emotions, they heal the grief, Lord God, that they have been buried, Lord God, amongst their family members, amongst their loved ones and friends, Lord God. Begin to heal those wounds like never before, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We ask that you will bless Apostles Church, Lord God. And we ask, Father God, and we thank you for the open doors, Lord God. We agree with you are saying, Lord God. And we decree and declare that we'll be established here on earth as it is in heaven for your glory, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that for the people that you will sit in, that I help to come alongside him, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the help from the sanctuary, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that he's not alone, Lord God. And Lord God, some of the things that are playing on his heart and on his mind, Lord God. You are concerned about the things that he is concerned about, Lord God. So we decree Psalms 138 over his life. We decree Psalms 91 over South Africa and their families and their homes, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that they do not have to fear, oh God. Then, Lord God, let their mouths be forth like never before your word, Lord God. Let them speak forth, Lord God, your word like never before. And let them realize that you are, Lord God, Yahweh Jireh, their provider, Lord God. Let them know that you are Jireh, Lord God. Not only that, Lord God, you're Yahweh Nisi, Lord God, their protector, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God. You are the God that will give them the strategies, the blueprint, and everything that they need in this hour for your glory. Now bless them and keep your hand upon their lives, their family, their church, their homes, and their loved ones, Lord God, and provide and meet every need, Lord God. We ask and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. 
And we decree and declare all things done, Father God. Thank you. Mm. Amen. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of South Africa, on behalf of uh, the continent of Africa, on behalf of the world globally that have been listening to the awakening word. With me, I had an awakening word for the body of Christ. And uh, it's like a word preparing the bride for Yeshua. And we bless you, my sister. We thank you so much for your time. I believe that the Lord is not unjust for the work that you are doing. I just see the word divine connections, divine connections. It's like it is your heart for desire now and again and again that Lord connect me with people that are gonna be, have a same mind and a same mission. And the Lord is saying, I am the Lord that does not lie. I'm the Lord that does not change my mind. When I act, I fulfill it. And when I speak, it comes to pass. So the Lord is saying, a revelation awaits for an appointed time. Though it linger, but patiently wait for it. I believe that it's not gonna be longer than you think for the Lord to connect you divinely with people that are of your mission, with people that are of your heart. As he says that, as you devote myself in him, so I will devote myself in you and fulfill the desires of your heart. I believe that that desire is now circled. It's a matter of the Lord manifesting his weight upon your journey. It's been a long time of waiting but the Lord is, I'm waiting behind the scene and look and watch if I will not fulfill the desires of your heart. Wow. wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Maga. Thank you. And, and, also, and, and also, Prophet Moy, as you are saying that to uh, Apostle Percy, uh, I, I've been, uh, I was seeing her in a vision, seeing her like a hen. A, a chicken, a chicken, a chicken she. So under her there were there were eggs. So she, she was hashing. Now the Lord is saying it is the season that your sons and daughters mm. will spring forth to what you have been hatching for. It's time now, it's the season to come forth and to be revealed and to be seen by the world. The desires, everything that you've been praying for, asking the Lord for, it is the season now to spring forth and to come alive. And you're going to see it. It won't take long, but it will be revealed because it is the season right now. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank I keep you. on seeing, I keep on seeing, I keep on seeing the word song, song, song. It's like the Lord is saying, release the song and do not get tired of releasing the song. It's like there is a worshiper in you. There is a worshiper in you that brings the gift of healing, that brings the gift of of breakthroughs and the Lord is saying, I love you when you sing for me, my daughter. I love you when sometimes you can just sing for me because in your singing, there is a prophetic message that comes out of that singing. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. <laughs> wow, no, God is good. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> uh. No, thank, thank you very much, Apostle Bessie. Oh, thank hallelujah. you for your time. Thank you for the quality time that mm. you have given us in, uh, in Africa and the whole world is watching. Thank you. May God bless you. We really appreciate it. Every word that you have spoken to us prophetically, we had as South Africa, we had as Africa, as you were speaking. We are so blessed. Thank you very much. And Prophet Moy, thank you very much for coordinating everything and be the vessel that God is using right now. And I know our viewers and our listeners on our radio station, they are going to be blessed by this message when we are airing it again. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for everything. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye, Bessie. -bye, See you soon. See you soon in South Africa. Amen. <laughs> Amen. See you soon in South Africa. Amen. Thank you. It's like in your heart, you are planning to come to South Africa. That's a problem. <laughs> God bless you.
I, I am called to South Africa too. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> we will welcome you. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Amen. Thank you very God much. God bless you. Have a Thank good you. night's sleep. Bless you. All right. Y'all too. Be blessed. Thank you. Right. Bless yeah. you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Now, thank you very much, those who are my viewers together on Car Radio and Car TV. We thank God for this program. I know you were blessed. You were blessed by Prophet and Apostle Percy and Foster from America and also in Zambia and also with uh, Prophet Moy Ntetwa. We are so blessed. This is the moment. We are doing this for you. You know our slogan. Yeah, we are here for you. Everything that we are doing, we are doing it for you. I know you're going to be blessed. See, the international people, and they are speaking to you. The servants and the vessels of God that God is using for you, Africa, arise. You heard uh, Prophet, Bess, I mean, Apostle Bessie Foster speaking to you and speaking to us as Africa to awake, to open our eyes. Yes, it's dealing with corruption. It's dealing with everything that is happening in the world, in a global stage, in a local stage. But right now, I'm telling you, it is all the blessing. You have heard, Africa, you are rising. We are rising and we have received the message. May God bless you. Tell others that we are watching. Even this, share this link with your friends and your loved ones and say, we were blessed. Our life is being transformed in Africa. We are rising. We are ready for the great harvest. We are together in Swanem Song Ministries. We are doing it for the Lord. May God bless you and see we see each other next time. Bye-bye.